and has 5,000 executions a year or more. That's a best guess number. And China has another problem. It doesn't have any cadaver organ system whatsoever for cultural reasons. Whatever the reasons and whether they're valid or whether they can be overcome, the fact is China does not. China. Remember I told you China has 5,000 executions a year or more. That's a best guess number. And China has another problem. It doesn't have any cadaver organ system whatsoever for cultural reasons. Whatever the reasons and whether they're valid or whether they can be overcome, the fact is China does not have any system for getting organs from cadavers. However, it has a huge internal demand. Believe it or not, some estimates are that as many as a million people in China could benefit from a transplant. There's a big business in China in transplant tourism. Chinese hospitals are all over the internet saying, come here and we can get you a liver transplant within weeks if you'll pay a high fee. Official Chinese government statistics state that they've done more than 20,000 livers in the past 10 years. And they also state that 1,475 came from living donors. I've told you they don't have a cadaver system. And they got 1,400 and something living donors. Even I, with dim logic powers, can make the conclusion that they've got to be getting them somewhere else, and where they're getting them is executed prisoners. Only possible source is executed prisoners. Consent in China in a pr for a prisoner is non-existent. Death itself, the execution, is time for the convenience of the waiting recipient, particularly that transplant tourist. If you're going to go to China and you're going to get a liver transplant during the three weeks you are there, then that means someone is going to go schedule an execution, blood type and tissue type the potential executee, and have them ready to go before you need to leave. I mean, you're not going to get a three-week wait time just waiting for somebody to die randomly in prison that matches your biology. You have to go find them and kill them while the tourist is there. So that's killing on demand. And remember I said the one place that has modified its mode of execution is China. So you are shot as the prisoner, having been pre-typed for your blood type and uh, tissue type, and then organs are removed on the spot. And the reason that can be done is it's all handled by the military. It's a prison. But in China, the military operates the prisons, and they don't worry too much about witnessing the removal of the organs, and most of the people involved in the organ procurement are military docs. But with the military in charge of the prison system, with the military able to bring to bear the medical tools and expertise to get it done, they can do something that wouldn't ever work in the U.S. Well, just recently, the Chinese Vice Minister of Health said that, in fact, they are using prisoners. I'm always asked, well, how do you know? How do you know, aside from an inference? Well, just before this talk, a couple days ago, he came out and said so. <laughs> and uh, there was a uh, report from the Vice Minister of Health that disclosed that they have a plan. They're going to establish an organ transplant response system, meaning a cadaver system like we have here, with donor cards and getting organs from people, in order to increase uh, uh, public credibility and law enforcement concerning uh, China's organ transplant system. And what he said was, the organ shortage is the bottleneck in the development of Chinese organ transplantation because they don't have voluntary cadaver donations by citizens, executed prisoners have become the main source of organs in transplant operations in China. That's the Admission. There it is. So we know what they're doing. He planned to form an organ donation that fits China's own domestic situation. I mean, that's probably getting after the uh, cultural uh, obstacles that uh, are faced in trying to encourage cadaver donation. And he said, the present situation of relying on executed prisoners will be changed in the next three to five years. Well, I think the present system of relying on, organi on uh, executed prisoners ought to be changed in the next three to five minutes. They shouldn't be putting up with five more years of executing prisoners on demand for transplant tourists. Why? Well, in China, the fact is 
that prisoners are there sometimes for crimes, sometimes for political reasons, sometimes for spiritual reasons, like Falun Gong, sometimes because they are Tibetans or other groups that are looking to secede. The list of reasons why you get on a capital crimes list in China is pretty long, and it wouldn't pass muster with too many human rights groups. So when we say you're going to kill prisoners, remember what we're talking about is political dissidents, spiritual dissidents, people who've committed petty crime, people who in no way would meet any of the descriptions of a Christopher Longo, whether he should or shouldn't be executed here. We're not talking about 5,000 people a year being executed for committing heinous crimes, whatever your view about execution and crime. There's a lot of people who are being killed on demand who shouldn't even be prisoners. So this system is really morally repugnant. And I'm going to say tonight one of the great tragedies of our time has been the lack of condemnation of this moral, uh, morally abhorrent situation in China, which has been going on year after year, without anybody saying much of anything about it. Murdering people for their parts without consent, some of whom don't belong there, for sure in the prisons, in barbaric ways, is one of the worst practices out there in the whole field of transplantation. Yet, articles describing Chinese experience with transplantation continue to appear in medical journals. People from China come and talk about transplantation and how, what the outcomes are at many meetings. I've been at a couple. Research goes on in China involving drugs and other ways to improve transplant sponsored by international pharmaceutical companies. Well, just to put a not too fine a point on it, but what the hell is going on here? Should the College of Physicians condemn this practice? Should the AMA be out there saying this is wrong? Sometime last year, I asked in the Lancet for a boycott of any articles about transplantation that came from China or any other country that is executing prisoners on demand for parts. Some other journals have come on board, the American Journal of Transplant, the American Journal of Bioethics, Transplantation Proceedings, Journal of Clinical Investigation. But there's been a kind of silence from other major journals and medical and scientific organizations. And I kind of know why. People don't want to offend China. They don't want to get in the face of the Chinese government right now. China, for many reasons, is a place that we want to encourage to enter the international community, not call them out for, do, for being involved in crimes against humanity. But they are. And waiting five years, if then, to see a cadaver system instituted in China, given this barbarity of how the organs are being obtained now, is five years too long. 